Welcome everybody, super, super excited. In this short video, I'm gonna talk about the AWS EC2 instances types, right? Now, out of those 11 different types, there are only common ones that I'm gonna talk about, right? So in about five to seven slides, run them quickly because these are important. So if you're beginning your journey within AWS or you're trying to explore which EC2 instance you'd like to be able to use and spin up for your applications, then this video is for you. So, all right, so I'm gonna jump right in. EC2 instances types, and let's jump in directly. So what is an EC2 instance? It's nothing but a server in the cloud. What you do is, if, let's say if you have an AWS free tier account, you can just open up a free tier account and then you can spin up an EC2 instance to run your application. So an EC2 instance is nothing but a server in the cloud, just like your physical server if you have on-premise within the organization. If not, then it's just on the cloud. AWS provides that for you. So just like your physical server, it comes with different specs. AMI, which is Amazon Machine Images. In other words, it's just pre-configured software already installed on the servers. So you don't have to do a whole lot, right? But the important thing is to pick the right server or right EC2 instance type. And that's what this video is all about. So what I've done here is I've picked up the five basic ones, all right, or the most popular ones, the important ones, so that we understand what those are and then you can make the right decision. All right, so out of the 11, which are for different types of workloads, the first one is regular EC2 instance that you see right here. Then we have the spot instance, the optimized EC2 instance, dedicated instance, and of course the dedicated host. These are the ones that I'm gonna cover in this video. All right. Regular EC2 instance. These are the default AWS instances that most of your applications will use and you will spin up on a regular basis. But there are instances in the cloud that are shared between AWS customers. So AWS does provide isolation between, for example, your data is not sharing your data with any other EC2 instance or any other server. You still get a dedicated server, but multi-tenancy, normally comes with a noisy neighbor, right? What that really means is that that could affect the performance of your server, right? Even though you have a regular EC2 instance spin up, and of course the cost and pricing, which of course I'm gonna cover in a different video. But right now, just understand that regular EC2 instance is just the most basic type you can spin up, but it comes with its own caveats. Next is the spot instance, right? So with the spot instance, you can serve or save money rather by purchasing an hourly compute power. So let's say you're working or you already have an EC2 instance spun up for yourself and now for a temporary application, you need another instance, right? So instead of spinning up another regular EC2 instance, you can just use the spot instance, maybe for an hour or two hours or three hours. So you don't have to pay for the regular running of the instance, right? So the spot instances are useful for running tasks that are not critical and can also be interrupted without disruption. So these are, AWS calls them as fault tolerant workloads, right? So think of like bad jobs for four hours or three hours or two hours and then be done with it, right? That's spot instance. Next is the optimized EC2 instance. Compute, memory, storage, right, are also all available. These instances are designed to deliver the optimized service level for a specific area. Now, that specific area could be your storage. So if your applications are, you know, database or, you know, heavy data intensive, then you would be optimizing this for your storage capacity, right? Similarly for memory or compute power. It's up to you, it depends on the type of application and the workload that you're putting in onto the server. So for example, optimized compute instances, they offer dedicated CPUs for specific varieties and speeds. So you can have, let's say four core, 16 core, eight core, all these CPUs running simultaneously dedicated just to handle that particular application. All right, then we have the dedicated instances, right? These are the virtual private cloud instances or known as the VPCs, and then they're isolated at the host level. So all instances running on the host would be reserved for a single customer. But there's another option if you want more isolation and control over your infrastructure, right? So these are again, dedicated just for you, for the application or for your customers, either way. So depending on your own requirement needs, 
these are the uh, the basic five ones that I wanted to quickly cover as far as the EC2 instances types. And finally, last but not least, is the dedicated host. Now, these enable the same level of isolation of dedicated instances, but they give you visibility into the physical host. What that means is it's required if your application use libraries or heavy intensive frameworks with licensing terms that restrict them to a single server. Or in my experience at the enterprise level organizations, we use dedicated hosts for compliance purposes because your data security, maybe HIPAA laws or other regulatory frameworks that your company requires, right? So that's why we need the dedicated hosts. All right. What works best, of course, is what you need to understand first based on the client requirement or your own organization's requirement, and then decide, look at the pros and cons of these EC2 instances types. And don't forget to, by the way, visit claydas.com. You'll find, you know, hundreds of hundreds of latest technology related courses, or you can watch these courses right here at YouTube and they're free. We put up whole full courses right here at YouTube. So it's up to you. Be my guest. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.